Hey, what's up guys? This is Alex from Xtrades, back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. It's very slow in the markets in terms of the indexes, the SPY and QQQ basically stayed within a range. QQQ kind of broke out a little bit, but it, it is kind of going slow, which is honestly what I was hoping for. We're looking for more of like a slow build up. Don't want to get up too high too fast because that'll, you know, that could result in a fast reversal. So we're not seeing any, you know, signals on the indexes yet, but there are some good individual tickers we'll go over today. And we're looking at five short setups today. So we might need to see some signals on the indexes before we take these, or they could be flashing signals right now. I personally think they look pretty good. So we'll go ahead and get into the economic calendar first, and then we'll get into the five short setups that we could look at for puts. So for Monday here, we do have some economic data this week. There really isn't any crazy. You can see I'm on a two star impact here because there's limited three star impact data sets coming in this week. So there, there's a couple of important things to go over here. So the New York Empire State Manufacturing Index I've seen this pretty much move the markets before. So I wanted to mention that we will be seeing that in the pre-market and it'll depend if, you know, it comes in at an extreme, you know, if there's, if it's showing, you know, contractionary data or if it's, you know, looking like the economy is rebounding, you know, but if it comes in in line, you know, and it's as expected, we're probably not gonna see much from it. So that will depend. And then we also have Fed Bostic, we got Fed Kashkari, Fed Barkin, and a Fed Cook speech, but that's after hours. We'll right at the bell. So lots of Fed speakers this week. You can see Tuesday, May 16th, we do have Fed Mester speaking, and then most importantly, the retail sales. So this is a three-star impact on this website, and usually retail sales can definitely move the market. So we'll have to see how that goes. And then we have a Fed Bostic speech as well. Industrial production month over month, industrial production year over year, and then business inventories. This could be a pretty good read for how the economy is doing. And then we also have Fed Bar testimony. We got a Fed Williams speech, Fed Logan speech, and a Fed Bostic speech. So like I said, lots of lots of Fed speakers, which could make some crazy headlines and cause volatility in the market, but We'll have to see. And then Wednesday, we got building permits preliminary, building permits month over month preliminary, housing starts month over month. I don't think this will really have an impact on the market, to be honest. Pretty much for re uh, real estate data, I would say that this existing home sales here, uh, this existing home sales here could definitely have an impact on the market. And then also we just have our regular initial jobless claims. We have the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index. That'll be kind of like similar to uh, Empire State Manufacturing Index. We want to see contractionary data or some type of signal that, you know, maybe the economy is rebounding, which I highly doubt because we're kind of starting to see some economic indicators failing here and showing potential signs for a recession. But if this comes in in line and as expected, I wouldn't expect it to do much. Fed Jefferson speech and then also a Fed bar testimony. So more Fed speakers. And then Friday, there's a Fed Williams speech. And then also we got a Fed Chair Jerome Powell speaking. And I was a little thrown off by this. I wasn't sure what this was for. So I did a little digging with to the Federal Reserve website. And you can see it's just going to be a conversation with Jared Tr Chair Jerome Powell and Ben Bernanke. So Ben Bernanke was actually the chair during the financial crisis a long time ago. Uh, so this should be an interesting conversation. We'll have to see how that goes. It could be a nothing burger for the markets because the FOMC is already over but we'll have to see and that's for the economic data so now we'll go ahead and get into our individual tickers here so the first setup we're looking at puts on this by the way most of these setups are breaking trend lines or pulling into supply and or rejecting supply so you kind of naturally have to look at their short side here and like i said you'll want to probably see some signals in the indexes so you want to see like spy and qqq starting to pull back like they were friday maybe see a little bit more downside you can tell the vix is very low right now so it looks like people kind of had to find movement in other places and you can see netflix down 1.4 you got amazon down 1.7 snow down 1.5 tesla down 2.3 and then uh coupang down two percent and this was all on friday so these are kind of like those high growth names it looks like people were looking for more volatility in individual tickers which makes sense because you know spy and qqq have been pretty slow so so this first setup here we're looking at snow you can see it's rejecting off the supply this is a rally based drop supply zone uh, i filled up this nice sell imbalance area you can see it went up pretty quick got a little overextended ran into resistance and did reject off this supply zone and we do have a confirmation candle showing us that the supply is rejecting and there's also one right above right above that slightly it's also another rally base drop in this base candle right here so that's a nice supply which also rejected here created a new supply candle right here and that's how you got this little supply stacked area from these two base candles 
which had really nice run-ups and then huge sell imbalances to the downside. And that's how a supply zone is created. So for price targets, you're probably looking at this little resistance here. It's about 158. It's probably the maximum I could see it going. If it were to go that low, that could be a stretch also. Like I said, I probably want to see the indexes start picking up a little bit more downside because this is a pretty far move. If the indexes could pick up those sell signals as well, this could amplify individual tickers and make them sell off a little harder. But I mean, we'll have to see. Might need to see a little bit more from the spy and QQQ, but this looks pretty good. And really the only resistance or really the only price target or support you can go for is this 158 right here. There's nothing in this area. There's only this previous resistance that was pretty much the breakout area of this. So it's no looking at puts here. You risk off, obviously, um, if it starts, you know, blasting over supply, probably like 180. That's going to be your risk off or even like above Friday's high if you're day trading. But for swing trades, if you were to enter this in a swing trade, obviously your risk off is above, you know, 180. For it to break out of that, that's probably going to end up going higher. And then another thing, we do have earnings coming up. So make sure you're not going to hold this into earnings unless you're ready to, you know, lose it all. As earnings are a gamble. You never know how they're going to go. You never know what kind of condition the company's in. All we're doing is reading price action. And right now we do have these supply stack areas rejecting straight off. And then we do have one support below at 158. So snow looking at puts. All right, and next we're going into Amazon. So Amazon here, similar to snow, we do have a rally base drop supply zone. It's pretty massive. This is a really nice base candle and you can see it actually rejected off this prior. But now, I mean, it's starting to kind of fall back within this little resistance here. So there's a resistance at 110.86 and that comes from this little area right here. It rejected pretty hard, but now kind of trying to start to form an uptrend line. It's not confirmed yet because you only have two tests on the trend line. You do need a third test. So maybe this will come back down for a third test. You got supply here. You got this local resistance at 110.86. Price is falling back under that and closed under that Friday. So ideally, if you can get back down to the trend line, or at least the 200 SMA area, which is gonna be this moving average right here, that'd probably be a pretty good price target and also a conservative price target. So you're not, you know, overshooting yourself here because I mean, uh, like I said, the indexes are not really flashing a signal yet. I mean, if you if you can get those index signals, maybe you can shoot even lower, like, you know, like 100s area. But for now, maybe just, you know, keep it conservative and be careful with the shorts. Even though there's some pretty good setups here, uh, just, you know, just be careful because we're not seeing those signals on the indexes yet. So Amazon looking at puts here, your risk off, obviously, could just be above 114s which is the supply zone high. You want to keep it conservative if you're day trading. Your risk off is obviously going to be above like Friday's high or probably above this candle right here. Maybe even something tighter. So Amazon looking pretty good here for a potential reversal. But like I said, still kind of in an uptrend here, trying to form one. Uh, it's still holding, you know, higher lows, trying to make higher highs, but then finally found some resistance and is not able to break out of this high yet. So maybe just look for a move back down to here. You do have a small little gap right here too. And you could, you know, maybe look a reversal once it gets down to the 200 SMA like 106s or you know the uptrend line or so so Amazon looking at puts all right and next we're going into Netflix here so similar to snow and Amazon this is also hitting a little supply area this this sell imbalance is really not as great as snow and Amazon so this one could be a hit or miss but also you do have this 349.80 probably just round up to three 350 that is a pretty decent resistance as well and you can see it did close back under the supply and also you know ended up closing under the 350s or so and it's a pretty nice rejection candle so ideal price targets it looks like it did try to form an uptrend here it failed it probably need to get back under that again as well uh, and then maybe it could get down to 316s or we can move this trend line over to this point right here so you got 0 0.1 0 0.2 maybe this could be a price target you could fall down for a third test here and it probably try to curl up about there if you were to move that trend line over so that's just one way to look at it and make a price target uh, if this was able to break obviously then you can see the 316s i personally wouldn't shoot that low that's a pretty decent move even though it doesn't look big this is the daily chart so you know these candles are you know whole days of trading so you do have to be careful and you know not overshoot when you're day trading or even if you're you know taking short-term swing trades you know if you're doing swing trades get 30 to 60 days of expiration and give it time to play out then you can maybe hold for the lower price targets but if you're day trading keep it conservative keep your stop losses tight and you know you maybe you even have to adjust your stop loss based on premium not based on levels because the premiums change so fast 
when you're trading short-term contracts day trading that's for netflix here looking pretty decent like i said you got a nice little supply candle right here there was a nice little sell-off and then eventually it looks like it's tried to bid up after this you know little earnings report here but now i mean pretty much struggling at 350 had a nice rejection on friday falling back under the supply and looks good for a move to the downside so netflix looking at puts all right and next we're going into coupang here cpng so this is like a Chinese ticker. It's obviously gonna, you know, move pretty much with like Baba and JD and other Chinese names. Sometimes it's kind of have a, has a mind of its own and it'll go a little bit crazier than the two and have a little more, more volatility. But I mean, it just depends. I mean, lots of Chinese names that do move together. So maybe keep an eye on the, you know, the Hong Kong stock index. Uh, I believe that's HSI on trading view. And that can kind of give you an idea of how China is trading overnight because they do have different trading hours than we do. In America. But for Coupang here, you can see it's got a nice downtrend line. It tried to break out over here and it did for a couple days. So this is actually a good setup for bulls as long as you took profit once they got into this supply stacked area, which it rejected directly off. But now it's starting to fall back within the downtrend line. And also it's breaking into short term uptrend line. So we'll go ahead and zoom into this. You can see this is your uptrend line. It had a test one, you got a test two. You had a test three, but it failed. Now falling back under that and also falling under the 50 kernel regression line here. So this kernel regression line is similar to a moving average. And I believe kernel regression lines have similar math to simple moving averages. So just kind of look at this as a smoother moving average. But you can see prices starting to fall back under that. So that could be a nice signal to start getting back down towards 15s. You can also see there's a little area here at 1539. So there's a little base right here that rocketed pretty nicely and also you can see that it fell back within this little resistance here at 1653 so you got pretty much you know falling back within that longer term downtrend you got the uptrend breaking and you're also falling under resistance and you had a pretty massive supply rejection obviously the supply rejection already happened so you do want to make sure you're waiting for a signal on this maybe wait for it to get under this little base right here and that'll flush you right down to 1539 so this is probably going to make like a good day trade and usually you know sometimes these uptrend line breaks they will see like a bounce and a back test before rejecting something like that but it looks like this is starting to flush pretty heavy just be mindful of that and maybe don't chase it directly at lows wait for like a little pop and then you can short it's just something to keep in mind i mean not every uptrend break is going to back test but it does happen sometimes so i just wanted you to be aware of that so coupang here you got i mean you got a couple different signals like i said you got the downtrend line you got this little uptrend line breaking falling back within resistance back under 200 sma and also rejecting supply looks like the earnings already happened so you don't got to worry about that and it looks good for a little flush down to this 1539 to 1501 area so coupang looking at puts here next we're going into tesla so this actually has a setup on the hourly so we'll go into the one hour chart but you can see i mean it's it's got this little short term uptrend line and it's trying to break under that, but we will need to go to the one hour to see it. So I got the one hour up right here. You can see you got a test one, you got a test two, you got a test three bounce, really nice. And then finally it's starting to break to the downside. Your signal for puts on this is going to be under 166.50s. So we're going to add an alert and we'll name it breakdown. Hit create and that's your signal. So we'll wait for it to get under 166.56. You want to see like a 15 minute candle close under this. Maybe even more confirmation would be like a 30 minute or hourly candle. Sometimes market makers will take it under and then, you know, algorithms will bid it right back up and pretty much reclaim the support like it never even happened. So you do want to make sure that this 166.56 gets taken care of, you know, gets broken because you can see you got a bounce here, you got a bounce here, you got a wick right here. So it's a pretty decent short term support and you'll definitely want to see it under that 166.50. If it gets under that, you do have a chance to flush down to 163.90s. And then below that, there's another support area at 158.83. You can also see we do have a little small gap here. Nothing crazy, but it is 163.50s to 161.80s. And that's your gap. And that's from this recent little run up right here. So maybe if it does get under that 166.50s, you do have a good chance to get start getting back down to you know this little gap here. And that 163.90s that I was talking about, it just comes from this little base right here. So this is that 163.90 right here. And that's why that's gonna be the first price target if it goes under the 166.56. I just showed you on the shorter time frame. So, cause it, it does have a chance it could bounce there. Cause it, I mean, it's had such a massive bounce right here back in March. So you just have to be aware of that. If it does break, this could hold up. And you can see once it reclaimed the 163.91, I had a nice little shoot up. 
So you just want to be careful because it could hold that up. So that 163.91 just showed you on the one day chart. And then right below that, if that breaks, there is a little gap that could get filled. If that does fail and is not able to bounce directly after, then you do have a support under that at 158.83 that you need to be aware of, which is this little double bottom base right here that held up pretty nicely. It's kind of like a little consolidation area. So those are your levels. If it gets under 166.56, if you're get in and get out, just that 163.90s, that'd be a good flush. That'd be a good first price target nice little scalp level if it gets under 166.50s so tesla here looking at puts next we're going into the spies so you can see it was very choppy last week we still have the same supply and demand level out here so you got the rally base drop supply has not been able to get up there or get into it or anything and also didn't even test the demand that i marked either so just really choppy there's really no setup on this you might have to go down to the one hour to even see anything so you've pretty much had to wait for it to get down here by the dip there and then sell you know pretty much at any peak that you can get is it it's just not going anywhere so we do need to see it get out of this little range and the only way for that to happen is if it gets under 408.64. If it gets under 408.64, it'll fall into the, our one day demand that we have marked here. And that's this candle, this base candle right here. If it can get down under that, this would be a pretty good area to try to you know, go counter trend, look at a dip buy maybe. And then there's another uh, demand candle, the same one that we traded off and also we bounced off as well. So this is kind of like a little demand stacked area. And in order, you know, to go lower, it would have to get under 400, basically, or under this 401. So that's pretty much going to be your short signal. If, you know, you're looking at puts for swing trading, you will want to see it get under that. Otherwise, you know, maybe wait for it to get up into supply. If it gets up into supply, you could look at scalping puts off of that as well, which has worked pretty good. I mean, it worked right here. It worked right here. It didn't quite reach it right here. Actually, I think it did. One second. Okay, so it actually did hit the supply. This was actually, this might have been on CPI or some type of data in the pre market. It just wasn't showing it on the one day candles because it doesn't have pre market data, you know, implemented into this candles. So you can see it rejected right off our supply directly at 415. Had a nice big wick reaction and it just wasn't able to get past that. So I just want to show you that. And that was this candle right here uh, on the 10th. Yep, that's uh, that's the supply area. So I'd wait for it to get back up there if you want to go short or wait for it to get under, you know, 400. Uh, if you're trying to buy the dip, wait for it to get back down to 408.64 area. Wait for it to get down to this demand area, which is going to be, you know, like 407s, 406s. Or if you really wanted to wait, you'd have to wait for the breakout. That's going to be above, you know, 418s, 419s. So that's your levels of focus. Really no trade on this right now. Now. we're gonna have to wait and it's also going to depend for me on the camera pivots when it comes to day trading which reset every single day so we'll have to see how you know they open up on monday and see how price action is looking as for the spy hopefully we'll be able to find some next week and next for the qqq so this didn't totally reach the the supply area i was looking for last week I was looking for the 328s to 330s to get hit. It fell a little bit short before finding a rejection candle. But either way, I mean, it's still holding up structure here. This is really hard to short. You haven't tapped the supply yet. You haven't broken a trend line yet. So it's really hard to go short off this unless you buy time on it and you know you can deal with upside risk because upside risk is still there. You got an uptrend line holding. You got holding over 321.51. It can make a base off 321.51 and you know go higher you also have a new demand zone right here so you got a couple things kind of going against you if you were to go short here but if you were to wait for it to get up into supply if you were to get get up in the 330s or the mid 330s that's a good area to start looking at shorts because look you have this huge sell imbalance here from 2022 this is a great area to start looking and you know it's pretty close so like i said if you bought time on this and could deal with a little bit more upside risk uh wait for it to reject that, that would be great that's pretty decent short setup just because i mean this sell imbalance from over here was just so massive i feel like it's going to be hard not to uh, reject it again at least short term uh, before trying to go higher and you know with the thing way things are looking i'm pretty sure it might take a little bit for this to break out but i mean who knows all depends on economic data the fed is pretty much data dependent which makes us data dependent as well so our fate relies in the data but for trades this week on qqq i personally i'll probably wait for it to get back down to 321.51 if it wants to dip into there 
good area to start looking at along again and go counter trend pretty much as if you would do right here you can see it pulled in right here held up nice pulled in right here held up nice pulled in right here and then also broke out so this 321.51 has been a great trading level uh, looks like there's a short-term resistance here as well at 323.63 and you can see i mean price went over that pulled back in it actually did bounce off 323.63 pretty nicely you can go down to the one hour so yeah so this is at 320.00 323.63 it did break under it briefly but it reclaimed it once it reclaimed it really big one hour candle here about half a percent to the upside almost just had to reclaim it and it was able to have a nice little run up but either way i mean this is just classic break and retest structure so you got your resistance you got you know the breakout retest move higher and same thing looks like it's trying to do the same thing off this 323.63 so you got a breakout retest off 323.63 if they can make a base or a bullish candle, I mean, it could march a little higher. I feel like it might get back down to the downtrend or the uptrend line first. It might even test this demand in 321.51. And that'd be a better spot to look at calls, at least for day trading. Me personally, I probably wouldn't want to buy calls or swing trades up here. It's just a little too extended for me. But I mean, either way, I mean, you could still just follow the trend. Make sure it's holding over 321.51. Uh, under 321.51 and under this trend line, that's probably going to be risk off and tech will pull back. So that's for QQQ. Just wait for those levels to hit. Be very selective. It's kind of getting up to a frothy area here. Once it gets up to the 328s to 330s or the mid 330s, you know, around like 335s, 334s or so, that's, you know, pretty good area to start looking at puts as well. Next, we're going to IWM, which you can see is basically unchanged. I've been looking for the same thing every week. If it gets up to the downtrend line, it's been a really good area to start reloading shorts or at least looking at put scalps off of that. And you can see exactly why. I mean, it just keeps rejecting. It's not able to get over. Now, I maximum, I could maybe put us down to the 170.34s. I feel like we're starting to see a little bit more selling pressure from the banks and the financial sector, and that could bring it down a little lower. But either way, that's probably about as low as I could put it, because each time we get down to this 170 to 168s or so, it just ends up bouncing short term. It bounced right here. It bounced right here. Also bounced right here. So, I mean, the amount of times it's bounced, that could mean the support's getting a little bit weaker. It looks like every bounce has kind of ended up a little weaker than before so that could be a sign that this is starting to fail a little bit and also this is a descending triangle formation you got flat bottom resistance making lower highs in a downward slope so that is a bearish pattern but it would have to get under 168.19 to confirm that and then it could get down to 162.50s and that would be a decent and triangle pattern playing out and you can see i mean it's kind of just like it had its peak up here came back down it's kind of making like a little shoulder right here and it looks like it's just i mean it's kind of starting to break back down maybe but you do need those confirmation levels and you would need to get under 168.19 first or at least 168 flat or so in order to go lower and also for the bulls you really don't have any confirmation here either you'd have to wait for it to break out of the downtrend line and that could maybe take you up to the 179.26 that we've been covering for weeks and that comes from this rejection area right here so that'd probably be a maximum price target if it was able to break out the downtrend but right now it's still trending below looks like it's going to head back into the supports and you'd have to maybe take profit around there and wait for a reload if it came back up to the downtrend line or if it gets under 168.19 and confirms our descending triangle formation and that's going to confirm under support so yes you could speculate on a descending triangle breaking down before it happens but that's not the correct way to do it that's not the correct way to identify a pattern either your, your pattern is always confirmed below or above a level and that's the same thing with ascending triangles which are bullish which is literally the opposite of this pattern you wait for it to break out high top resistance you wait for like a candle close over like a back test and then it can go higher and that's your confirmed pattern same thing with this we're waiting for a support to break once you get the support break that confirms your pattern that's where a lot of people get patterns mistaken they'll start speculating on them before they even form or before they're confirmed and then they wonder you know why it bounced back up or you know why it totally inversed their move that they were planning on going for that's because you didn't wait so sometimes you just have to wait and be patient so your pattern is going to be confirmed under that level or if you're bullish you're going to want to wait for the breakout of the downtrend line simple as that but like i said maximum i can put us down to 170 34 to 168 just the same support as before and then probably try to snap back up again and just you know keep doing the same thing but that's for the iwm really no ideal entry you know my favorite entry is obviously going to be directly at the trend line once you get short-term confirmation we can even zoom in here so this is the daily downtrend line so this is the same line we we're just looking at 
Nice rejection here on the 15 minute. You got another rejection here on the 15 minute and a rejection of the general area still even here as well. So that's just something you'd want to see on the shorter term time frame to know that you can enter. You got a nice rejection candle here off of it. You could trade down to there. You got a nice rejection candle here it resulted in a nice gap down. So this was good confirmation to go shorter on the open. And then this general area as well, maybe not, you know, directly off of it, but either way, it's still the general area. And you can assume that it's probably going to keep trending downward. So that's just one way to look at it on the shorter term time frames. But you could, I just want to show you like what it does in the shorter term time frames from this one day trend line. So that's how you'd identify that for day trading or, you know, finding an entry short term for a swing trade. But right now, I mean, you can see it's a little bit lower and further away from the trend line. So this is mid range and it's not a good entry for puts yet. So you're going to want to wait for it to get back down to here. Maybe you'll get calls off support or you can wait for it to break out or you can wait for it to pull back into uh, uh, the downtrend line again and look there. But either way, your trading point is going to be off the trend line, above the trend line, as support or below support. So, and likewise with the resistance, if they got up to resistance, you know, you could look at puts up there, but you want to wait for those inflection points and trade off those. You don't really want to trade mid range because I mean, anything can happen there. And next we're going to into the VIX. So the 2022 to 2023 average close did drop from 24.22 down to 24.11. I'll pull it up right here. So I input last week's closes from 5.8, I believe to 5.12 of May. And you can see this is our average down here, 24. 11 and this goes all the way back from you know january of 2022 when the year started so the reason why i wanted to track this is because this is when volatility picked up this is when the fed started hiking interest rates this is when the economy kind of started to slow down a little bit so you do want to track volatility for that period and we use this average as sort of like a mean regression target because eventually the vix does snap back and come back to the average. So if you're watching for the first time, I just wanted to mention that. I've explained it a bunch of times in other videos, but if you're new, just wanted you to know what this was. So for the VIX, pretty much unchanged. I mean, all candles stayed within 16s to 17s. There really wasn't any crazy spike like the week before. That's because we really didn't have any, you know, economic data or anything interesting. It's kind of just a post FOMC, post earnings, kind of post CPI as well kind of just like a slowdown maybe people still di digesting the news not knowing what to do next which is understandable we really don't know what's going to happen next but right now the vix still holding the 16s it would need to get under that to get bullish for the market so vix would definitely need to get it back under 16s and as well as usual my signal for bearish for bearish trades on the spy or the spx is going to be over 20. so once the vix gets over 20 or it gets over uh, with a close over 20, maybe even two daily candles over 20. That's a good signal to start looking at SPY puts, SPX puts for a swing. That means people are starting to rehedge their portfolio. People are paying for insurance. So you really can't do anything with this this week. You're gonna need a little bit more signals. Maybe if it can get back above the 1811 here, that would be a clear shot back up to the 20s. That could be a good short-term signal for puts as well. But like I said, still stuck in a range also still holding 16 so in order to get bullish obviously just need to get under that 16 if it gets under that 16 you can definitely head back down to 15 to 1473 and that 15 to 1473 is just this little bottom right here from november of 2021 so i just wanted to mention that so 16 down to that that's your pretty much your range if it can get under 16 and that's why it's important to get back under 16 because you do have that little free space it could fill. And that's for the bulls, but either way, bears, you're going to be waiting for that signal over 20. Otherwise, you know, you could look for that short-term signal over 1811. If you're looking at the shorter time frames and day trading, maybe over 1811 is a good area. Because you can see, if we go down to the one hour here, the 1811, I mean, it's just a struggle. Uh, yeah, look, this rejection here, rejection here. It didn't quite make it up here, but either way, still reject the general 18 area. So it does need to get over that. If it can get over that, Maybe that's a straight, you know, straight shot up to 20s. And that'd be a good short term signal for day trading puts. But like I said, on the daily time frame, which is what I usually pay attention to, it gives the best insight. You're going to wait for it to get under 16 or wait for it to get over 20. And those are your kind of more major signals that I'm personally going to be looking for. It's still holding up here, so there's still a chance it could bounce back up. And yeah, so that's why it needs to get under 16s. If you want to see the market go higher and you want to see the SPY, SPX go higher, it's important it does get under that level and stop stagnating here because it kind of makes people wonder if it's going to bottom out and also this means you know insurance and puts and option premium in general is very cheap right now it's not expensive to hedge 
you're very far below the 2022 to 2023 average close which means you are getting very cheap volatility 30 days out and also getting cheaper premiums than if you were trading at the average or above the average so it's just something to keep in mind just keep that 16 area in focus needs to get under that otherwise wait for it to get over 20s and next we're going into the dxy so finally something happened so we've been looking for this bounce in the dollar the past couple of weeks it kind of got it right here but i mean it eventually failed but I, I pretty much mentioned as long as it's holding the support i feel like the dollar is elevated and it could snap back up and head up to 103s we pretty much got that maybe a little short of 103 so i still feel like this can go a little bit higher if it can get over 103s obviously that's going to take you much higher and honestly this little dollar bounce barely impacted the markets uh spy and kqq did have a pretty red day but eventually had a pretty gnarly bounce towards the end of the session so this dollar move was up you know was that plus 0.63 percent so this is a decent move anything from like half a percent to you know 0.75 on the dollar is pretty good i mean that's that's definitely a move that bears are going to notice and they usually pounce and start seeing sell pressure in the market likewise if the dollar the dollar is selling off that much that's pretty good for bulls and people start panic buying stocks but i mean it just depends but friday pretty nice move we saw a nice little sell-off in the market but eventually it did bounce and it actually bounced while the dollar still kept going up so market stayed resilient despite this dollar so we do need to see it over that 103s if it gets over that 103s that is an area that you know people could start being a little bit more worried and we can start seeing a little bit more sell-off in the market and that 103s is going to come from this COVID 2020 peak so that's a major resistance at 103 flat that's why i mentioned it does need to get over that and then over that obviously it takes you up to you know the 105s so if we can get over that 103s that would be great might start seeing more sell pressure you can see the dollars even getting over the 50 kernel regression here so this is the uh, 50 a kernel regression line with a 50 look back period pretty much like a moving average similar to a simple moving average but a little bit smoother you can see it was able to reclaim over that you can see it reclaimed over that previously over here had a nice run up and then every time it gets back under a nice sell off pressure so i mean it's a great little trend indicator and i've just started to get into it recently and kind of use it as a moving average and it's just great like it even works in the shorter term time frame so if, you, if you're interested in learning about kernel regression lines or want like a like a little a little point out to like a resource or like an indicator in trading view i can point you in the right direction i know some pretty good ones that you could mess around with and it's great for trend reading and good for like signals on the short term if you're a day trader just looking for like crossovers or looking for price to trend under or below and you can look for rejections and support to get made off of it as well so that's pretty interesting for the dollar here it's finally over the kernel regression with two candles you got a close here and a close here so you got two closes over the kernel regression line your next area like i said waiting for it to get over 103s 103s would definitely start bringing sell pressure to the market i believe but if the market does start or if the dollar does does start stalling out here at 103s and kind of chills out and there's not much currency volatility you know we might see the markets be a little bit more slow so i do want to see a little bit more currency volatility see the dollar go higher that'd be a good signal for the indexes to come lower which then also play into these shorts coming down a little bit more aggressive as well but like i said you know just if you want to be patient you want this, these to play out maybe by time you know look at swing trades on these by 30 to 60 days of expiration out if you're day trading just stick to scalps and keep those tight stop losses and you know if you're in a loss just cut it move on wait for it to get to a better spot and you could try it again if you do want to buy time 30 60 days of expiration is great it gives you time to think it gives time for the analysis to play out gives you time to deal with a little bit of upside risk and they're not as volatile hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm gonna get this chopped up edited finally this time i didn't have to re-record so i'm happy about that the last two weeks we had some issues uh one week i had an audio issue and then the next week my block's power went out and i didn't get done with this video till three in the morning so that was fun this week hopefully get it out a little bit earlier i love you guys make sure you like comment subscribe to our extra's youtube channel and i'm out